Hi there, welcome back to another interview with The Composer. I'm Jake from The Retro Perspective, and today I'm here with Yannick Ruterberg. How are you doing today? Thank you. I'm fine. Did I pronounce um, your name correctly, by the way? Almost. Reuterberg, almost, okay. I think, is the right Reuter, one. Reuterberg. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thanks Reuter, for that. It's an annoying one. even <laughs> AKA Dream Thing, right? Yes. That's my artist name. What made you come up with that name for your uh, sort of stage name, as it were? Uh, it's been a while now. I'm not sure. It, it used to be Sleeper's Delight. Uh, so clearly I have some yeah. some form of obsession with sleep. Uh, <laughs> I've always been an insomniac, or rather I used to. So I think that's just, that's usually the thing that comes to mind. And Dream Thing... Uh, it just felt right. You know, you go through 10 different or well, a hundred ideas and either someone else has taken it or it just doesn't feel right. The dream thing did. As a, as a fellow insomniac, I do feel for you there. Yeah. <laughs> Most recently, uh, you will be known for the composer of an amazing game that I've been playing a crap ton, uh, Satisfactory. Yeah. Uh, is it true you've made four hours worth of music for the game? Yeah, I think <laughs> it's even a little more than that. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, depending on how you count. Yeah, it, it is amazing. It's, uh, you know, I started working on that soundtrack, uh, I think it was late 2017. Uh, so it's been a long time. I mean, I haven't worked on it full time, but uh, but, but when I was starting to, you know, put, put it all together, that's when I realized that, this is a lot. This is a lot more than than I thought. But yeah, yeah, four hours. It's a bunch. So how do you feel now that Satisfactory's had its full official release? Very good, uh, but also kind of anticlimactic since <laughs> it's. I mean, it's been out. It's been out for so long, but at the same time, it you know hasn't. It's a strange place. Early access. Yeah. Uh, but but it is a it is a relief at the very least. Of course, uh, it, it's sort of it's it's the dot at the end of the sentence. It completes it, uh, and and it, I guess the most cool thing is how 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 well uh, received it is. People really love it, and I'm I'm happy for that. So many people are playing it. I mean, they reached top three i think on on steam at some point with 180k players at the same time it's uh, insane for such a niche game uh yeah. it's really cool yeah as, as someone who's been playing it since i believe update five mm. uh and then having a long long break and coming back to it i'm i'm also really happy that more people are now picking it up you know yeah, because I think it's it's a brilliant game. Yeah, update five feels like quite recently, but I mean, it's, been, <laughs> it's been a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I was surprised that I hadn't heard of it beforehand because I was a huge fan of uh, Factorio already. Mm. Don't know if you've played that. No, I haven't, yeah. but I'm I'm well aware of it. Yeah, which leads me to my next question, actually, which is: uh, Are you a gamer yourself? I am a gamer. Yeah. Uh, not not necessarily a factory gamer. Sure. Uh, I hadn't played Factorio. I still haven't. Yeah. Uh, now uh, I do appreciate Satisfactory, though. Uh, the third person perspective makes it very a lot more enjoyable for me, and also the exploration part. Uh, but no, I'm more. A, uh, I'm a big From Software fan. So Dark Souls and Elden Ring and. Well, all of their titles. Great. Uh, and I do play some... Uh, I used to play Dota for a long time, a very long time. Um, sure. But don't have as much time anymore as as I used to to game. Have you played any of From Software's earlier titles like Kingsfield, Armored Car? No, uh, I haven't, but those are on my list. I'm very yeah. uh, scared but excited about that. <laughs> Especially the Armored Core series, I haven't none none of those. But I think uh, the original Armored Core on PlayStation One is very very good. It's it's possibly right. it's one of my favorite PlayStation One games for sure. 
Oh. Uh, haven't played the recent Armored Car game, but uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to that for sure. All right. That's exciting. Uh, then just, you just bumped that up on my list. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Um, so you have you have been playing Satisfactory then when, you, when you've had time, I suppose. It is it's yeah. a very lengthy game. It is a very uh, lengthy game. Yeah, have you got have you got very far, or have you mainly been focusing on exploring? Because I, no. I agree, I agree with you that the exploration is very good in in Satisfactory. Yeah, I mean, I I have not reached the end game. Uh, I've kind of tried not to play the game too much because I I want I want to play it finished, and I can do that now. Uh, mm-hmm. because that's really the curse of being a developer. You you kind of ruin the game for for yourself. That's true. But as a freelancer, I, I still had the opportunity to to not go bananas on it. You know, I, I still haven't played it to death uh, at all. So I've I've reached um, halfway through, uh, but no more than that. Uh, but that's still a lot of time. So can you tell me a bit about your musical influences both within video gaming and uh, outside of video games as well yeah yeah it's it's a tough one um for but, but usually the first one that comes to mind when i think influences for video game music is uh thomas dvorak um i never know if i pronounce his name right uh his artist name is floex uh, he, he did the the soundtracks for Machinarium and uh, Samorost, uh, the series. He's really excellent. Uh, I listen to his music uh, still, uh, always have, and probably will. It's uh, it's very subjective, but a uniqueness to his sound, which mm-hmm. sticks out, and that's that's an important thing for me in in soundtracks that. You have this that's, uh, something that sticks out uh, sonically, and and he really he does that well. Uh, and for satisfactory in uh, particular, I uh, I'm a big fan of Hello Meteor, a kind of cinematic synthwave ambiente producer, and he produces a lot. Is a three album a year kind of person uh wow yeah it's incredible and it makes me feel so bad about what i what i produce <laughs> uh but his um uh, his sound like the synth sounds are so much what i was aiming for with satisfactory uh cool. it's, it's very cool yeah uh, as for outside it's uh, like for my regular music i, I don't know i i listen to so much I usually don't make this type of music uh, that I did for Satisfactory. I'm more into uh, like hip hop and down tempo music, uh, and I don't. It's hard to 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 single out a specific influence. I guess Gorillas, they they they're the one who want, who's who made me want to start with music. Cool. Uh, That's the first album I ever bought. Actually, was um, the Gorillas' first album. That was one of my <laughs> one of my first as well. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, so you say that uh, you're not used to creating this kind of music that you wrote for Satisfactory. Uh, how was your creative process different to writing your own music? Because you do uh, sort of lo-fi, down-tempo music yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it wasn't that much of a difference uh i would say but because i use something i do like to do and not not to write music but it's you know play with synths it's a fun thing and designing uh designing synth sounds sometimes i write something out of it but usually i don't you know you just create a melody and whatever and you you get stuck in the loop of just creating a soundscape and and that came to I used that a lot for Satisfactory. The hardest part was actually turning that into actual tracks, uh, and and the, there were supposed to be long ones, you know, seven, eight, nine minutes. It's a lot of uh, music to stick in in one song, uh, but that's usually how I start. I just uh, I open a, a synth, a digital one, or a 
uh, an analog one and just start playing around until I find something that, okay, this is, this is the core uh, for a song. Uh, and I work from there. Uh, usually when I write my own stuff, I start with a beat. Uh, th there hasn't been any of that in Satisfactory, and that was also a tough one to, to write music without having a particular like rhythm going. Nice. Which, which was rough, but also yeah. fun. I mean, it turns so quickly into ambient uh, music, and uh, I like that. I, th I think it's really nice because there are a couple of tracks um, where it kind of is flowing along and then a drum beat or a, some sort of beat does kick in a little bit and you kind of like get into mm -hmm. it. And yeah, I think those moments in, in your satisfactory tracks are really their standout moments. Um, but the beat never overpowers the music no. because I, I do think that the, the way the game plays, you would probably get bo more bored of the music if there was that repetitiveness there. Yes. In the end, I agree. I, yeah. I'm I'm happy you feel that way <laughs> uh, because I I had to sneak those in there. <laughs> I had a lot of uh, discussions with uh, with Ewell, the well, audio director, I suppose. Uh, and I would always like present a song like, "Look, this uh, this a uh, minimalist, but it's a beat." And like, no, no beats. And uh, eventually, I I had to like, okay, I have to sneak them in there like subtly. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But I'm glad he um, he stood his ground because I, I I think you'd grow tired of it too. Also, when you hear all the machines and stuff, it would be too much if you had something you know, sure. pumping. Uh, so it was the right call. Yeah. Um, so you're in Sweden, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is, correct me if I'm wrong. The studio, is it Coffee Stain Studios in Sweden, our base in Sweden as well? Correct. Uh, uh, I'm in Gothenburg, or there yeah. in Skövde. So I'd like to know, did you work closely with the team right from the start on sort of the vision for the music? Or did they kind of just leave you to your own devices a bit and uh, see what you came up with? Uh, kind of both. Uh, I mean, I, I had just moved from Skövde when I started working for them, ironically. Uh, so, so I've been working from from remotely, uh, but I mean, I, I was there a lot, uh, and we had we had quite a few meetings on on their vision. But the vision was, I mean, the, the frame of reference was very wide, um, and the, I had a lot of freedom to to make something. So in the beginning, I just I did a bunch of stuff. And, and we played it until we find some found something that this sounds right, uh, and then I kept working from that. Uh, so so I've had uh, well I've I've had really really great creative freedom I'd, I'd say, uh, and I'm happy for that. I am very grateful for that because it's not. I don't think it's that common uh, at all. Different uh, pieces play depending on whether the player is in different biomes or what they're doing. Um, was that an idea that happened from the start or was that kind of something that gradually came into being as you wrote? It kind of uh, gradually came in like the first, the first stuff we did was more uh, almost stem based, you know, I, the, the, the songs I wrote, we would split up in like five pieces and you would, you would be able to randomize them just to make some variations. Uh, and, and you would have the day music and the night music. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in the end that didn't turn out very well. Uh, I kind of have that issue with adaptive music that it's, it turns kind of bland because you never hear the same thing over and over. Um, so, so at first we, we ended up just having a few songs for the factory, like when you're when you're around machines, and then a few songs when you're outside exploring. Mm -hmm. That was the vanilla, like the first early access release. That's how it was, uh, and then the night music, of course. Uh, and I think we also did the intermission ones. 
I'm not sure. This was a long time ago, but I think uh, like now you have one major song and then you have something we call intermission, which is basically an ambient uh, track in between with some uh, space to, to breathe. Uh, I think we had that system from, from start, but uh, no biome uh, specific music. That wasn't until update maybe two, perhaps when they first had realized that this was a hit because they had I mean, we had no idea of what would become of the game uh, b before it was released. Uh, and then, then we put some more juice on it. And that's when the idea of uh, biome-specific music came up. Well, I, th I think they had the idea before, but just didn't want to spend time on it because it's such a huge map and there are so many biomes. And in the end, we didn't even write specific music for every biome because it's like... It's already four hours of music. You don't need another hour. It's enough. <laughs> even even I, I, I think so. Yeah, of course. So that came. Um, the short answer is it, it that kind of grew along with the project. Great. Uh, so you've worked on a couple of other small indie games. Is that right? Yes. Uh, could you tell us a bit about those? Yeah, um, I did uh, like the, the noteworthy ones were Steamworld Heist uh, and uh, a game called uh, The Journey Down Chapter 3. Uh, not as composer, though. Uh, that was as a sound designer. Ah, okay, sure. Uh, coincidentally, I just started playing The Journey Down Chapter 1 uh, a really? couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah. They are good, good ones. Yeah, They're sure. local in, in the uh, studio. I think they yeah. shut it down now, but... Very cool people, super cool. Sky Goblin, uh, for those mm -hmm. who didn't know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was. Uh, I worked uh, with sound design for a while, uh, and still do. By the way, it's just that's not my main focus. It's not the focus I want to have. It's music. Uh, but that that was cool, so especially Steam World Heist one was a was a fun game to work on. Again, as a freelancer, which is. Uh, shame because you kind of miss out on the whole you know working with people all the time it's more you know you you show up with a delivery but it was it was a fun project it was very metally it was a lot of banging and thrashing about so looking to the future is that what you have planned uh, to focus on video game music composition or just general music composition uh, sort of. <laughs> I've, I've pivoted a little. Uh, I'm, I'm currently running a, a game studio with a couple of uh, friends uh, making a new game, which we've been working on for two and a half years now. Uh, and I am the composer, yes, but I also do sound design and I've so far done level design and, and uh, game writing as well. Uh, so, so all the creative stuff, basically. Uh, but Again, it's music that I want to focus on. Nice. And it's it's this game, yeah. Yeah. So what's the new studio called? And uh does the game have a title yet or uh, the studio is called Feeble Minds. Uh it's some of the well two two of the Kofstein founders, my previous founders, uh who who founded this with me and uh, a couple of friends. Uh the game has a title, Serpent's Gaze. It's not hundred uh, percent. I think it is, but I mean, it's it might change. Just just so you all know. <laughs> Great. I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Then um, is is there any other? Have you revealed any sort of details on it yet, or is that still to come? No, it's it's revealed. We've been very incognito, just working. But it's time yeah. to show more. Um, it's a four player uh, rogue like souls like. So it's uh, basically uh, circling back to me being a From Software fan. It's basically the the gameplay of a of a Souls like, uh, but with roguelike elements. So I'm somewhere between uh, Dark Souls and Hades. Okay, uh, sounds sounds like thing something that a lot of people will probably be interested in. Then <laughs> I should hope so. I yeah. really should hope so. <laughs> Were there any specific challenges? Or unique opportunities encountered while you were working on the satisfactory soundtrack, especially compared to sort of what you'd done before, more sort of sound uh, sound design. You were saying, 
kind of auxiliary ones. Like the for me, starting to work remotely, like by myself, has been hard or, or was hard. Uh, this, this, I, I mean, I'm I'm an introvert, but I do really need some social interactions and that kind of kills creativity for me. And also I'm not very well disciplined at home. I like to come into a uh, studio and work. Now I do have a studio eventually. Uh, I built one, uh, but that was a, that was a hard one. And also to be creative on demand, like from Monday to Friday, every day. I'm very but similar. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's, it, I kind of prefer sound design for that reason, because sometimes it can be more mechanical, you know, it's just something you do. It can be very creative, of course, but there's a lot of like Foley stuff, you know, yeah. footsteps and it's not that very demanding creatively. With sound design, there's always a goal that you have, you know, you need, you need to get to that yeah. goal. Whereas you, writing music, it's very nebulous of it's very what, nebulous. what you have to achieve there. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, so that was, yeah, that, those were the big challenges. Uh, but other than that, it's been kind of smooth sailing. Um, I, th I think Freel yeah, freelancing is hard. I, I'm, I'm so I feel ambivalent or conflicting feelings because you have the freedom which I love. I really love the freedom of, of being a freelancer. Like I would work uh, eight months of the year and then I'd be free the whole summer. Mm. I really like that. But then I'd be stressed the whole summer because I didn't have work, you know, uh, and, and that's the dark side of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I prefer being in house I, um, in the end. So in terms of your solo music uh, outside mm -hmm. of video games, have you yeah. got any plans? for that uh releasing new new stuff sorry that's probably a really annoying question <laughs> yeah no no not at all it's it's rather the answer is annoying the answer is <laughs> yes of course i do but i've had those plans for, for years <laughs> uh it's it's strange with 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 music with with art in general releasing stuff i don't like it. i'm a very confident guy i have no problem being uh, self confident except when it comes to my art you know with my music for some reason i hate showing it uh i have so so many unreleased tracks that i just want to finish you know get them to the end end line and push them to spotify but then you have this voice like no it's not it's not good enough it's it's even embarrassing you shouldn't do it don't show it to them <laughs> so yeah i do have plans uh and every every year i tell myself that this is this is the year hmm. uh but we'll see it really sincerely is the plan to have some stuff released uh now by the end of the year but who knows i'm not gonna promise anything <laughs> of course uh, yeah. that's the good part of having someone telling you to make music because then you have a deadline and yeah it's this is what it is like sorry you uh <laughs> you uh, you said this is fine and this is fine and it probably is deadlines yeah. are good yeah it sounds like we both have similar sort of feelings on creative output of music uh mm. i i same as you i prefer to have other people involved rather than just doing everything by myself but recently yeah. I, I i have songs that are ready to go but I just need kind of like some people to play certain instruments or things like mm. that. Just can't get anyone. <laughs> can't yeah. find anyone. I know. Uh, so it, it's like ev everything's 99% done and then you just need that last little bit. But uh, yeah. yeah, that's been, yeah, really. I've had a few songs like that for years, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I really feel you. But it's like to say the last 10% is 100% more. Yeah, <laughs> sadly. Yeah, I, I get you. But yeah, but you're a composer as well, if I'm not uh, yeah. mistaken. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Based in uh, England or <laughs> Great Britain, right? That's true. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully not for much longer. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I want Fair to get out, get out of here as soon as possible. <laughs> Where to? 
maybe France. Uh, a lot of my influences are either Canadian, like French Canadian or French. Mm-hmm. So um, cool. I just feel like the music industry there would be a bit more uh, welcoming to yeah. the kind of music that I want to do, you know. So yeah, that's a good reasoning, uh, I'd say. Sure. Also, it's a nice country. Well, let me ask you about uh, the music industry in Sweden. How mm-hmm. how is it over there? Uh, to be honest, I'm not super uh, into the, the the Swedish music industry. I don't really like Swedish music. Swedish okay. music is very uh, samey, samey, and not very exploratory. And I feel like it's strange because Sweden produces some excellent songwriters and excellent music producers but yeah. they leave and they leave for the states and uh, great britain as well mm. uh, so yeah that's uh, i'm not really involved though the, the last years uh, we've had a boom in 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 hip hop which is cool because that used to be pretty niche and small here but it's gotten kind of mainstream uh, and I do appreciate that. Yeah, that's great. I do. I do like some hip hop from like different countries. Uh, I've I've heard a few South African hip hop artists that mm. I really like, and then there's South, even South Korean uh, yeah. hip hop now, which I, I was very surprised when I heard about that. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, I think that's uh, that might be an offshoot from the. Uh, k-pop scene because i mean they've had a lot of uh, hip-hop incorporated in that yeah so i mean it makes sense that they get some some proper hip-hop from it as well yeah i i'm surprised about uh you say that about the swedish music scene though because like places like iceland have such an amazing music scene in my opinion Mm. Uh, so you'd think that a lot, you know, Nordic countries generally would be sort of yeah. similar. You know, I might, I might be out on thin ice saying stuff like this. I'm talking about the mainstream, but there's definitely... Mainstream, yeah. Yeah, uh, and like if you look into the culture side of things, yes, there's a booming uh, music scene. Especially in like Gothenburg, we have, we're pretty big on jazz. Uh, and that is cool. We have a few jazz clubs here, which are great, uh, really cool. And there, there are a lot of musicians. So um, I, I might have been. Yeah, <laughs> I spoke too uh, too plainly, perhaps. But but that's the way I feel about the music here. Yeah, I yeah. People would say the same about me saying UK music scene isn't mm-hmm. great. But where where I live in Leeds, we mm-hmm. have. Uh, too many jazz musicians like everyone wants to do jazz uh, and everyone is a student well most people are students that then just leave as soon as they've finished their studies so it's like they get all the opportunities and then they go away somewhere else and then the people who live here uh, left you know (laughs) Yeah. yeah that is a shame that's a it's a complex thing to to fix as well. Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Anyway, uh, I'll not take up any more of your time talking about the music industry. Um, no worries. Thank you very much for joining us today. I will leave any relevant links in the description below. Please, everyone, do check out Yannick's music. It's very good and uh, hope you're all enjoying Satisfactory. Thank you for having me. In a tree house in